going to jump right into it. Tons of a quick Google search. There'll be a hundred different websites that'll tell you how to create content. And, and most of them, if not all of them, all say the same thing, which is be authentic and resonate with your audience and be a storyteller and don't try to be something you're not, which is all really great advice. But if you don't know how to make your content authentic in the first place, you're sort of at an impasse. So what? Uh, um, that's what we're going to do um, over the next couple of minutes is I'm going to teach you um, how to tap into that, what your special voice is as a creator. Um, and then after that, I'm going to show you a very quick method that I developed um, that uh, will enable you to share your message in a pretty straightforward way that doesn't take up all of your time because you know we all have farms to run and flowers to plant and that's our primary purpose not um, creating content so i'll show you how to streamline it so in the next slide because um, whenever you get together with me there always has to be a backstory um, women live in the backstory as storytellers and I am uh, you know that perfect example so the backstory is um, uh, I am the writing partner of this gentleman whose name is Ari Mizell and he is considered the world's most efficient person he works um, like one to two hours a day and has built this enormous empire and um, when we worked with clients or uh, when we do our work with clients um, and they all came came to us generally in the beginning and said, uh, you know, I really want to create authentic content, but every time I ask somebody to write for me, it uh, never sounds like me. And our answer was always, well, what do you sound like? And it was kind of remarkable how few people could tell us exactly what they sounded like and what they wanted to sound like and what their intent was. Um, so... I'm gonna help you do that. Uh, and we'll do it the Ari way because um, it's the fastest, most efficient way. So the first thing we have to do in the next slide is think a bit, little bit about who you are as a creator. Um, we are all creative people. We are flower farmers and that is an incredibly creative pursuit. But each one of us has a different uh, emphasis. Each one of us is most comfortable in a particular way. So some people say, oh, well, I can't write. And I open up my laptop and I stare at the blinking cursor and I can't get anything going. Um, well, then that's not your natural, that's not your natural creative uh, environment and you should stop doing that. Um, and you should find out where you are. So on the next slide, there's three different areas of, uh, create what kind of creator you are and the kind of creator you are is going to tell you where your message will be best uh, made and disseminated if you are a visual person then you need to be thinking about meta facebook instagram and pinterest that's where you're going to live as a creator uh, initially if you like to write then you have to think excuse me, you're going to be swimming in the medium pond and the Substack pond. That's where I swim as a writer is, uh, is on Substack. And when I write for people, I write for them on medium because it has a really good um, algorithm that, that uh, helps you uh, zoom in on very efficient and exceptional phrases that you can then read use someplace else but that's another and if you're a verbal person if you love to talk if you if you're engaging if you tell great stories on the fly uh if you're comfortable in front of a camera or just the sound of your voice then you need to live on tiktok or youtube so you don't but you have to pick one because you can't be everywhere because if you're everywhere you're nowhere um and so your initial creative creator identity uh, should align somewhat with where you are most comfortable. So on the next one, um, we're gonna delve into something that I developed called a voice print, which is like a thumbprint, uh, but it's for your voice. And what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna use some literary techniques to uncover what that is. Um, so, this you can screenshot and do as, a, as an exercise if you want. 
Um, on the next slide is the voice print. I'm going to let my dog out and then I'm going to talk about the voice print. Hold on one second. So every piece of content that you create in any of those arenas has to reflect your personal values. If it doesn't reflect your personal values, then you're not being genuine. Then you're telling somebody else's story. So if you think about your personal values as a flower farmer, as a farmer, as a woman, as a human on the planet, your personal values are, and these are big literary themes, right? Like uh, integrity, beauty, art, uh, big, big meta kinds of thoughts. What are the things that are the most important to you? Education, community, um, those are the values that you that you will lead your that will lead your content, and then you have to think about who your audience is, um, who your audience really is, not who you want your audience to be, but, but who to who are you talking to, who do you want to talk to, um, is it people who are just getting started, is it master gardeners, is it uh, local community people, is it identify who you're talking to. Um, is obviously a basic kind of thing when it comes to uh, producing any kind of content. And then the vision piece is really important to me because whenever I do work for a client or I'm writing for myself, I have to remember that I'm doing it for a reason. I'm not just doing it because everybody's doing it. I'm doing it for a very personal, uh, personal reason. And I have to uh, remind myself where those guardrails are for me so that I know when I've left those guardrails, especially when I'm writing for somebody else. I don't want my personal opinion to get in the way of what my client wants to express. Um, so I have to remember what what is the purpose of this. So it would say like uh, make a sentence for yourself, you know, I will tell compelling stories by focusing on my day to day life as a flower farmer because uh, my life is what makes me unique, right? There has to be a reason. And what, and if you can keep that in your head at all times, that really crystallizes the kind of content you make and the kind of content that you pass on um, because it doesn't align with the vision that you have for yourself as a creator. And then you have to think about your intent. I mean, are you, is it a, is it a sales thing? Are you persuading people to buy your product? Or are you just being informational, um, you know, telling people how to grow Lysianthus for the first time? Or, or is it entertaining? Is it, do you, are you bumbling? Are, are the things that you do hysterical to you? And do you have epic fails that you think people will resonate with? Entertainment um, is, you know, that, that, that's why I, uh, I took a, like a three year break from social media because because, and uh, I went back on and I, uh, I started with TikTok, only TikTok, because, um, because, uh, because awkward people do well on TikTok. I liked that it was real people in kind of messy houses and who weren't perfect and put together. And, um, and I felt like that was, well, those are my people. And, and everyone was kind to one another. And uh, every day I would laugh until, you know, I peed my pants because uh, I've had children and that's what happens. And, um, and what a wonderful thing to know that there's a place that I could go every day where I was guaranteed to laugh. So entertainment is it, critical, especially if you're working hard. And then you want to think about the mood. And there's the six things that uh, you want to your audience to think about when they think about you. Um, and those are, will also inform your content. And this last part, tone, which is the part I, I find to be the most interesting is it's a two person exercise. So find a trusted person you can do this with. And um, like when I worked with Carla, and her son, I had Carla tell me what she thought of her son's style, writing style. Um, and the most important thing about that is 
the intersection of how you think you communicate and how you actually communicate, it, that's the sweet spot. Because I've worked for a lot of um, men who think they're really funny and they're not. Um, they're, or I work with, I've worked with a lot of men who like to quote other men um, as if that gives them more authority in a certain thing. And being unaware of how you come across destroys your message, destroys. So ask someone uh, in your circle to tell you, how do you come across as a creator? Um, and then pick some of those, pick three of those things and focus entirely on creating content around those three things, because it's where you feel comfortable and it's where your less message lands really well. And there isn't, you know, the, this isn't just, um, this all has a purpose. So uh, how your message gets through is critical to all of it. So that's sort of thinking about creating kind of a persona for yourself with all those elements um, involved. The next thing is how do you get those ideas? How do you, how do you capture those ideas? So um, the next slide is all about idea capture. And um, the first thing you have to do is you have to grab all the ideas all the time, grab them all the time. Not all of them are good um, and not all of them should, but, but uh, it has helped me enormously to get into the habit of simply capturing the ideas so that my brain isn't filled with, I should totally write that down in an hour. I should, to once I get near a pencil, I should, and once, uh, no, I gotta remember that because that's gonna be really great. I, my mind doesn't have to be filled with trying to remember stuff if I can simply capture it um, when it's happening. So I use, as a writer, I send myself messages all day long um, and I use something called Voxer, which is an asynchronous, it's like a walkie talkie. It's like the notes app on your phone. Um, but I'm so used to it now that this is, when something occurs, I press the button and I say, um, start the sentence with blah, 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 because it sounds like it comes out better. Whatever, whatever the idea that I have is, I capture it immediately on Voxer. And then I sift through the ideas uh, weekly and pick which ones I think have legs and which ones can disappear. And then I, that's my basis. Then I, then those ideas that have endured become the basis of whatever content I'm going to create for myself or whatever essay I'm gonna write for myself or whatever job I have working with somebody else. So I'm really comfortable talking to myself because I spend most of the warm months wandering around a garden talking to myself. So I don't, I'm not, I don't think it's, I, well, I talk to myself all the time, but there are people who aren't comfortable just sort of talking into a, a machine there are people who like talking to somebody else. So what I like to say for clients who aren't comfortable talking to themselves, I say, send me the message, Call, message me and tell me what it is. And that subtle shift in, I don't like the sound of my own voice. I don't want to talk to myself. And the subtle shift in, well, I'm sending it to somebody. Um, open frees up a lot of people to get their message out. So um, if you could scooch to the next slide, um, that it's all about just letting it go. Now there are a bajillion uh, apps that you can use that um, that do voice to text or um, just capture voice. And here are some of them that you can use. My favorite just to capture is Voxer. And then after Voxer, once I have those ideas that I really like, I do the next thing, which is um, I uploaded all those things to uh, a service called Temi, which Otter, Otter does this automatically, but I'm so used to Temi now that that's what I have to use. So I take those ideas. Let's say I sent myself a four minute message on uh, whatever it was. I'll give you an example. Um, last fall, we planted 5,000 tulip bulbs at Birdsong Farm. 
at the mid in the middle of November. So I took pictures of planting those bulbs, right? And I remember to myself, this is an important thing. And it's not just because we planted these bulbs, it's because I was having, I was having an enormous amount of anxiety about the fact that I had never planted 5,000 tulip bulbs before. And I always get myself in these situations where I feel like my confidence over compensates for my complete terror that I don't know what I'm doing. And I thought, well, they're all going to die. And then what am I going to? And so I went into this loop of just anxiety about planting these bulbs. And then I no one was helping and it was really cold and I was really wet. And it turned into this big, huge drama in my head that I got out on a Voxer message. And it went on for about five minutes where I just kind of puked up all my feelings about planting tulips and, and what was I doing when I'm over my head again. So I take that, um, you can switch to the next slide because I'll show you what I did then. So I take that essential message and the next one, Carla, thank you. I take that message and I transcribe it. I download it first of all, and then I upload it to Temi, temi.com. And then in about two and a half minutes, I get a, a, a transcription of my voice telling the story. And that is my raw material for what it is I am going to write about. And I have pictures associated with it because I took pictures because I remembered to take pictures uh, while I was doing it. And then I take that and I craft it into an article, a short blog post. And the thing about all humans is we don't speak logically. We don't speak as we write. And you can only tell the illogical part of it when you see a transcription. So it basically becomes a question of moving the pieces around so that it flows as a written piece of work. But all the elements are there because it's you speaking, but you you know you trail off away and you trail off this way, and now you have the pieces that you can organize into a particular blog post. Then whatever show, it doesn't have to be a million pages, whatever, however long it is, it doesn't matter. You now have a piece of content that you can put on Medium or Substack. Medium is better because Medium has uh, interactions with your audience and people can highlight sentences that they think are really awesome. And this is a really wonderful thing because if somebody takes the time to highlight one of your sentences, that is a social media post. Now you know that that sentence can become uh, something on Instagram or something you say on TikTok or something that somebody that, that resonated with somebody so much that they did that is social media gold. So then after I find out what works, right? And what's, what's, what's happening. I take that, um, I take that article and I upload the entire thing to an, a, a, a platform called Lumen5. So I copy and paste the entire blog post onto Lumen5. And the AI, the artificial intelligence that Lumen5 has, populates everything I've said as a separate slide takes all the, the big points, makes an individual slide and adds art and music to all of those things. So you can have a one minute video of your 500 word blog post that you transcribed on Temi that started with your voice without ever really having to edit anything uh, except to move the pieces around uh, you know, when, when you're working with the, with the hard copy. So that, that Lumen 5 video can then be used uh, on all platforms that accept videos. So that's an example of how uh, I do that for everything that I create for myself or for other people. I hope that made sense. And then um, the last thing I just wanted to say was to just try it, right? Like when I first started working for Ari, you know, I'm old and all the people I worked with were very young. And 
I was not tech savvy at all. And Ari would always say, um, no one's allowed to help Amy with Lumen 5, or no one's allowed to help Amy with whatever it was, whatever platform we were using. And I was like, you're the worst boss in the whole world. I hate, that's so mean. I can't. And he's like, yeah, well, whatever. And that's how we work here. And so I would, because I'm super competitive and whatever, I was like, well, screw it. I'll figure it out. And bleh. and so I went in and I learned how to use these things and then I'd send him a video and be like, it did it. And um, he was always so great. He said, you know, I, I said that because I wanted you to know that smarter people than you built these things and you can't break them. You just have to go in there and make tons of mistakes and figure it out on your own and take ownership of the technology. And um, it's extremely valuable. Uh, it was an extremely valuable lesson for me because now I'm fearless when it comes to investigating, especially with chat GPT and uh, the new AI, some terrifying and wonderful all at the same time. Um, it's not frightening because you can't break it. So what I, I would like you to do in your own time, it doesn't have to be something you do right now, um, but I would love to see what you come up with is, um, can you go to the next slide? So a writing prompt that I think is really, <laughs> is our biggest disaster on the farm happened. And the thing is we remember bad things. Our brains are hardwired to remember disaster more than joy, right? So it's easy to, come up with um, an example of a disaster. Um, and I just would like it if you took the time to think about what it was and what did the day smell like and uh, what, you know, oh, what was the actual problem and what, and send yourself a message about it or send me a message about it. Pretend you're talking, telling me the story and see if you can't replicate what I just told you to do. And if you want to send it to me, I'm more than happy. I mean, li literally, if you want to send it to me, I'm more than happy to show you how it, how you can turn it into um, actual copy. And then you can follow the process uh, along. So um, the last slide that I have is these are just things you really have to remember. Just remember who you're talking to and choose the right platform for the kind of creator you are, uh, where you feel most comfortable. And really investigate ChatGPT. Uh, 4.0 just came out and it's insane uh, asking it a question. I, I had a terrifying experience with it the other day. I was showing uh, my, we, my son and I were playing around with it. And I said, ooh, let's have them, let's have the AI write a script for Gravity Falls, which was his favorite cartoon when he was a little kid. But let's have the main character of Gravity Falls die in this script that the computer is gonna, that the AI is gonna develop. And the AI came back with this answer that said, um, it's a children's program. And I don't think it's appropriate to write about um, a character dying in a children's show. And I was like, well, I didn't ask you for your opinion, but that was a little bit creepy that it took over. So, but investigate some AI tools because especially if you're doing educational stuff, you can get tons of copy from ChatGPT immediately. What's the best way to plant Lysianthus in zone 5B from seed? And ChatGPT will give you everything you need. So you do not have to do it yourself. Um, and then take what, leverage everything. Don't let any content that you create just stay in its original form. Change it into something else. Keep changing it into something else. And then see where your audience interacts the most and follow them, right? If they're interacting with you a lot on TikTok, stay with TikTok. If they love reading your stuff on Medium, stay on Medium. Stay where you, bloom where you are planted. And then always, always, always measure re your results. There's such great metrics on any platform now that can tell you where your message is going, who's reading it, how long they're engaged with it, are they fans? Use that as a, not as a, a reason to get down on yourself, but to find out where, uh, where your message works and where it doesn't. And the, these, this is like my toolbox here. 
for creating content for clients. It's Voxer, it's Canva, which has come like a really long way. Lumen5 is my video place. Temi is my um, uh, transcription service. ChatGPT is for, it's like a card catalog, but in a terrifying way. And Buffer is a free social media posting platform. So you don't have to post everywhere. You can schedule a calendar of postings on Buffer for free. So um, check all those things out. It's super fun. And uh, my personal blog is on Substack and I write for the Christian Science Monitor about my farm adventures. If you wanna see what my essays look like. And there's my email if you have any questions or you want me to look at your stuff, I'd be more than happy to because um, we all have a voice and the world should hear us and we should take up a little bit more space. So thank you so much, Carla, for asking me to do that. And boom, 1230 on the button. Yes. Perfect. Beautiful. Wow. Okay. Well, I'd love to open it up to the group now for any questions or maybe even share some of the content you're thinking about sharing or stuff that's been successful for you as a flower farmer, what your audience seems to respond to, and um, just directions you want to take your own storytelling. I have a question. Hi, Lisa. Sure. Um, I um, I started sharing on TikTok, and um, what I found was in my analytics was that like no matter what how long my videos are, people are only staying on for like twenty seconds. No matter what the content, no matter what the video is about, and I only share information about like gardening and um, flowers and. I also do vegetables as well at my farm. Um, do you have any suggestions as to like how I can adjust like the length of view time? I think it's a it's a TikTok thing, not a you thing. So okay. I think generally speaking, that's what you get there, right? Unless you're a dog rescue video, that's the amount of time that you have to capture someone's attention. So do it on YouTube. Okay. Find or do start doing reels on Instagram, but move, move away from a platform that in and of itself is constricting you. Cause it's not, you, it's not your content, it's the platform. When I started transferring them to, I started like making them shorter to 90 seconds and transferring them to Facebook. And I was getting more engagement, but it's just, it's like, it's a different type of engagement. So it's, you know, and, and I started getting actually paid for my engagement. And I apologize, I just realized I'm in my bathroom because I'm watching, I'm washing microgreen trays, just so everybody knows. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sanitizing in my big tub. Um, I was like, there's my shower. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so I, I, I started transferring reels to, to, to Facebook and I did start getting like, I actually did starting monetizing like some of my videos, but it's just, it's a different type of engagement. And then when I transferred to Instagram, I actually got like really nasty, believe it or not, like, cause like it was, and it, it was men, it was like, I got really nasty, like negative comments on Instagram where on like a couple of my videos where they were like, you know, I was talking about like, just like I was in Home Depot. I was talking about like lights and so, it was just, it was really ridiculous. Um, they were like, you're in the wrong aisle, like get out of Home Depot. I was like, this is insane. <laughs> um, you know, it's just really interesting from platform to platform, the response you get when you're doing, when you're a content creator, and I'm not a con, I mean, I don't consider myself a content creator, but like when you're creating content that you're engaging with, like from one platform to another and how you get the right engagement. Um, anyway, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's just been very interesting. I'm not, I've only been doing it for like two months. So do you have a, do you have a particular, um, Carla and I were talking before the meeting started that I love like, uh, there's a ranunculus group on Facebook. I mean, I love that people are so enthusiastic about ranunculus. Like, do you have, is there a niche that you live in that you could build a group around? 
Yeah, I mean, well, yes and no. I mean, it's yes and no. So it's uh, I have ADHD. So unfortunately, my life travels wherever my hyperfixation lives at. Oh, welcome. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, ADHD, no, but you're among ADHD, your people. So yeah, an ADHD gardening group would be freaking awesome. So, so here's so that my my name is the Distracted Gardener on TikTok and Instagram. Love it. Um, so ba- mainly my content is talking about like my ADHD, how that affects my struggles around my farm, how to struggle, how it affects like, like my, how I get things done. Like when I have disasters, what, why those happen. Um, and normally it's because of something that's happened with my task initiation or whatever, but yeah. So yes, there is definitely like, I could form, like if I want the, the hard part is like balance. It's like balancing the content creation around like actual task of like doing. Um, right. So, you know, when you, you know, talking about like auth- being authentic and like finding somebody to help create content while I'm also doing, trying to like do all of those things. Cause I am a one lady show uh, when it comes to doing all the things between like, I, like I said, I grow microgreens during the winter during like, and during the summer. And then also I have a seven acre farm. So it's, uh, you talk to yourself a lot. Uh, yes. And I do send myself a lot of messages, uh, when I get content ideas, because otherwise they, uh, out of sight, out of mind. So, um, I do try to like keep notes whenever I do have an idea, um, to try to keep up on the content, because there are a lot of days where I just don't have the energy to make content. Right which is also challenging. So I try to bank on the days that I have good days. I try to bank content and we'll make videos that, I, or like take videos of things so I can use that for later content. Um, right, because remember now also the same people are not seeing, like I'm, I was always under the impression like, no, there's gotta be something new every day because you're not talking to the same people. You right. have, you can make evergreen content that rolls itself through a, a cycle because you're not you're you're really not talking to the same people yeah so keep running it you know yeah uh, i just followed you on tiktok oh <laughs> <laughs> thank you I, I think that's a nice niche though for tiktok because there is a huge adhd community it there. is it's it's an interesting it's an interesting um place TikTok because if there's not a tremendous amount of drama that comes along with your TikTok creation, I find that like you don't get a tremendous or if you don't create drama around if you're not talking about the latest disasters of gardening or the latest disasters of like Montesano seeds or whatever you know like or Gwyneth Paltrow's diet. That was all over TikTok yesterday. Or that, you know, like I feel, I feel like that, like unless, you're, like they're, like if you're not creating buzz about like things, like in a negative view, because I try not, I try to steer away from that stuff. Um, you know, it does seem to be challenging with the, you know, getting, you know, having your 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 videos go viral. So where like you're getting a tremendous amount of, I don't have, I only have sixteen hundred followers. Well, sixteen oh three, I think now or two, sixteen oh two. Um, so you know, it's just uh, it's it it's been an interesting uh experience because this is not what I obviously what I do as a main focus, but I really want to gain because I want to help people like learn how to do stuff because I mean we should if you have the knowledge you should share it. So thanks for your help. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for sharing with us. No problem. Um, you know, I, I, TikTok is so funny too, because you can see how creators can go for months and months and months, years even, and just kind of be low level doing their thing. And it, all it takes is that one video that goes viral and um, gets in the followers. And it could be just kind of a self-deprecating disaster or... You know, well, I, that's why I love the idea of using Amy's method, really. Well, I have a video of me hysterically crying in my field when I had, I had a sunshade that blew through, I grow dahlias and I had, I had a sunshade that blew through and I grow them in plastic in, in grow bags. And I had one of my sunshades that I had tethered down and it blew through three rows of my, three rows of my uh, bags and it tore through the bags right as everything was flowering and like just topped all my it like tore through all my dahlias including like killed the tube every I mean and I was like hysterical like and I was like I'm filming this but I was like I have to film this moment because 
it's like another setback in the film of like everything I've worked so hard for and like everything is about to bloom and I am like this feels like why am I doing this you know I'm doing this for a reason and like every time I do it like this just feels like I am like 20 steps behind um so it's like sits in my drafts and I was like I bet if I post this I will get a ton of views on it because I'm like sitting here crying on camera but then I'm also like I don't want to post this because I feel like I'm sitting here but crying on camera if you post it to an audience that's going to uh I hate the word resonate that's that's going to feel it right you post it on a hashtag it with Dahlia for days I mean talk to we know how we baby our dahlias they have the jordan almonds bags on them so that they don't you know i mean it's a real babying high maintenance flower yeah and people talk to dahlia farmers because i'm telling you that's you'll they'll start a gofundme page for you yeah well yeah well <laughs> it, well yeah and that's and that's a hard part too is it was it was after i had already had a like a devastating i lost 300 tubers from brazilian wilt um in all my cutting beds, like earlier in the season, because I had used non-sterile potting mix because I was in a hurry and I didn't wait for my pro mix to come in. And so I, and, and the Dahlia community I was in, like, was like, we're going to send you all these tubers. And they did, they like rallied around me, but then I'm like, I was like, it just keep screwing up one thing after the other. So it's like, it's like, how many times do you like, look like a fool <laughs> on social media? So, um, oh, thank you, Jess. Thanks for following me. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, so it's just, I don't know, it's, it's been, a re and I don't mean to like keep anybody like, or like talk about myself. It's, um, it's just, it's been, it's been a really, like, I don't know anybody else who does this kind of thing. Um, and let alone, you know, I was like, I I'm going to do this because I, I started creating content because I had a person I met five years ago on a ferry when I was living on the West coast, um, messaged me out of the blue and I had talked to her about what she was doing and her, her business. And she was like, Hey, I just got that patent, um, for that business, I, for that idea I was talking about with you with, like, she was a complete stranger. And she was like, I just want to say thank you for talking with me about it. And I was like, if I can help that one person I was talking with, like, I should maybe tell other people about the stuff that I know. So anyway, um, I just think it's important to share with you. So I appreciate your help. Love it. Well, I look forward to your content. Thank you. Now I'm going to have to go post something. <laughs> awesome. It's been a few days. Good. Well, I'll be waiting for it. Thanks, everybody. Okay. So, and then Jenny said she gets lots of engagement on flower pictures. And we're so lucky to, to work with something that's beautiful all the time and different, right? I mean, if you were just an eggplant farmer, eggplants are beautiful, but there's only so much you can share in terms of pictures, whereas flowers, are, you can have something different every day. Okay, and then soil health education, that's wonderful. And Jenny, I know you use a lot of natives, so that's a really popular topic, topic right now. And the history of her farm, which is from the 1690s. Wow, that's amazing. And Facebook and Instagram are best for her. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Jenny, anything else you want to share about kind of your vision or challenges you see? And then Becky mentioned that batching content creation is great. And I'm sure she's going to be talking about that. And then Jess actually asked, this is a great question. Has anyone converted their, <laughs> Jenny says Dahlia's hate me. <laughs> oh, they're finicky little divas. Um, okay. Yeah. So has um, Jeff wants to know, has anyone converted their personal Instagram to a business account and then try to increase followers? Good question. Becky or Amy? Um, any input on that? That's what Becky did. Okay. I'm kind of like that too. My life is sort of an open book and I have no boundaries with work and life. And so and I generally keep my world very PG rated and kind of my, my voice is kind of nerdy and I don't know, Amy knows better than I am. She has to listen to me yammer all the time. But um, you know, I, I I try not to make my content too much about myself or too personal. Just keep it weird, I guess. But um, so yeah, I've I've just ended up using my personal Instagram and um, Facebook for everything. Um, and then, 
to become sort of that uh, business account, Instagram uh, influencer sort of thing is the most important thing is a, a, that I learned was that uh, there has to be dimension to your personality. So maybe you're a successful flower farmer, but you're completely obsessed with Disney World and you know everything in the world about Disney World. And those elements of your personality have to come through uh, on the business page because that increases the reach exponentially. So that's, I, that's one of the best tips I've heard about doing business accounts. And also to make sure that your link tree or whatever you're using as your you know, link in bio thing is populated with all different ways for people to get in touch with you your website, your medium page, uh, your merch, your whatever, it should, uh, that link in bio uh, link tree should be very robust.